Your dog may often tolerate human behavior because they are loyal and have unconditional love for you. However, there may be some things you do your dog wishes you'd stop doing. Perhaps your dog puts on the brakes or runs away when you try to bathe them. Maybe they shy away from hugs or certain types of handling. Even the most laid-back dog dislikes some of the things we as humans do. Here are 10 things your canine friend wishes you'd stop doing. Number 10. Not letting your dog sniff on walks. Sniffing is a crucial part of your dog's walk. To them, it's like reading a newspaper and catching up on all the neighborhood gossip. By rushing their walk, you're depriving your pup of the small enjoyments in life. It's important to allow your dog the few extra minutes they need to sniff around. If you're short on time, a good idea is setting a timer on your phone. Walk as far as the timer will allow, while letting your dog sniff as much as they want within a specific time frame. If you have a designated time slot, it doesn't matter how far you walk, only that you allow your pooch to fully enjoy themselves. Walking should be your dog's time, so as long as you head back home when you need to, let them sniff all they want and they'll certainly love you for it. Number nine, ignoring your dog's invites to play. Your pooch is extremely playful by nature. As a puppy, playing is an important part of socialization. It develops a dog's athletic and cognitive abilities. The need to play stays with a dog right through adulthood. However, without any siblings to play around with, the responsibility falls on you as the owner, especially if you only have one dog in your home. Playing with your dog gives them a chance to let off some steam, enjoy life, and be close to their human companion. Understandably, you won't always have the time and energy to play, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't set aside time every day for some one-on-one -on -one interaction. Your dog doesn't need you to spend hours playing with them. They only need a few minutes to know you really care. Next time your dog looks up at you with excited eyes and a toy in their mouth, seize the moment, even if it's just for five minutes. Number eight, hugging your dog. Have you ever wondered why your pup looks at you like they're afraid when you go in for a big hug? According to many behaviorists, most dogs just hate being hugged. It can cause them a lot of anxiety and can often be seen as a threat. Most dogs tolerate gentle hugs from a trusted human, but that doesn't mean they actually like them. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't cuddle your pup. There are just better ways to go about doing it. It's also important to teach your children how to hug your dog so they won't scare them. It's recommended that you approach your pup from their side and get on the same level as them. Then, simply wait for your dog to come over to you. If your dog leans toward you, they want the love. If they struggle or walk away, let them go and don't force a cuddle onto them. Number seven, walking your dog when it's too hot or cold. If it's been a while since you've walked barefoot on a sidewalk or road on a scorching day, you might want to give the surface a test the next time you consider taking your dog for an afternoon walk in the heat of the summer. If it's too hot for your bare feet, it's too hot for your dog's paws. Burnt pads aren't the only way heat can harm your dog. Heat stroke is a real danger too. On the other hand, it's also not advised to walk your dog when it's too cold. Although they have fur to keep them warm, walking on snow or ice can really hurt your dog's paws. When it's too hot or cold outside, you're better off finding other ways to entertain your dog and get them moving, like playing fetch or tug-of-war. Number six, pulling on your dog's leash. Some dogs are so determined to get to where they want that they can completely ignore the human on the other end of their leash. Besides being dangerous for you and your dog, it isn't very pleasant. Although it can be nearly impossible to stop from pulling on your dog's leash when they pull in the opposite direction, it's a behavior they really don't enjoy, and with some training, it's not needed. When your dog pulls on the leash, it shows that they're paying attention to something other than you. The goal should not be to pull on your dog's leash, but rather, your goal should be to teach your dog to want to stay with you. That way, their leash goes from being a form of control to a form of communication. Start training your dog from the get-go to avoid any unwanted behavior at a later stage. Number five, not trimming your dog's nails properly. Does your dog run away when they see you walking towards them with a nail clipper? Your pooch is not alone. Most dogs can't stand having their nails trimmed, ears examined, and mouths looked at. However, it's something that has to be done. To make the process easier and less stressful for you and your dog, it's recommended that you handle your dog's paws, ears, and teeth on a regular basis. 
offering them treats to make it a positive experience. Approach your dog calmly and gently talk to them. Practice the right technique with a vet or groomer before trying it yourself and invest in a pair of dog nail clippers. Number four, lack of rules and routine. It might not seem like it, but your dog needs rules and a daily routine. If your dog is behaving badly, it's probably because you haven't taught them the rules. Training is an important part of your dog's life structure. A routine is important because your pooch has an internal clock. When you don't stick to the routine your dog is used to, you will end up confusing and frustrating them. Try and feed your dog at the same time every day and establish an exercise routine if possible. You'll probably notice that after a few days of structured rules and routines, your pup is happier. Rules and routines make your dog's world more predictable and can actually boost their self-confidence. Dogs also don't like it when the rules are constantly changing. Your pooch will appreciate consistency because it creates that crucial association between a scenario and how you want your dog to react. Ensure that everyone in your household is consistent with the rules to avoid confusing your dog and disrupting their routine. Number three, shouting at your dog. Sometimes shouting at your dog is not the best way to deal with bad dog behavior. Rather, you should train your pup and correct any unwanted behavior with proper instruction. It is much better to train your dog than to punish them. If you shout at and punish your dog, you are not addressing or solving the problem. You are making them see you as a source of discomfort. You will make them scared and confused, and they will expect a negative reaction from you without knowing the reason for your shouting. It is important to know that your dog will not learn anything by force. Instead, it's better to use a reward-based system. Constructive and positive training methods help your dog learn the right behavior through conditioning, which is the best way to discipline a dog. Encouragement is the best way to keep your dog's good behavior in place. Number two, ignoring your dog's body language. It is your duty to know and understand what your dog needs and wants. Understanding your dog's body language is a very important part of communicating with them. Dog's body language differs from that of humans. It involves unique methods of communication, including barking, whimpering, and grunting, to name a few. Therefore, it is crucial to know exactly what your dog needs and wants when using any of these communication forms. Knowing your dog and their unique language is essential to understanding them, defending them, and keeping their stress level low. While some behaviors, like leaning on you for attention, are fairly universal, your dog may have very different ways of showing their anxiety, like freezing in place to a weird wag of their tail. Keeping a close eye on how your canine friend responds to different situations will help you interpret their language and could help you notice a potential issue Number one, patting your dog's head. While this may seem like the most obvious place to pet your dog, most dogs don't like to have their head patted. Look at it through your dog's eyes. How comfortable would you feel if someone approached your head from above? You'd probably feel a little anxious, nervous, or even scared. This is the most confrontational way to pet your pooch. And often your dog will give signs that they are not overly enthusiastic about your petting choices. Pay attention to your dog's body language when doing this. If they lower their head, turn away, lick their lips, gasp, yawn, or show the whites of their eyes, they're showing signs of stress, and it's time to stop. If your dog's eyes and mouths are relaxed, their body posture is loose, and they lean in more, they are probably enjoying the experience. So the next time you choose to pat your dog's head, watch their body language for signs of stress or pleasure. They are trying to tell you something, 